Popular Science covers developments in both the public and private space sectors. And joining us with more on the planned mission is the magazine's senior editor, Sophie Bushwick. Good morning to you, Sophie. Good morning. So Elon Musk said that this was the most complicated failure that they've had in their 14-year history. Have they determined now what the problem was? Yes, they have. And the problem was all about the extremely cold temperature that they have to keep the oxygen fuel at. So in order to keep the oxygen tank pressurized, there's another tank inside it containing helium. And that helium tank has an inner layer of aluminum and an outer layer of a carbon composite. The problem is those two layers, when they cool down, as they do when you put super cold helium and oxygen in there, is that they shrink at different rates. And so what they think happened was some oxygen from the outer tank got in between the layers and then combusted because oxygen that is, is bad. extremely flammable. Yeah. That's bad. Sophie. It was only four short months ago that this happened, but they're ready to launch again. How did they recover so quickly here? They've implemented a short-term solution. So one of the reasons for the for the problem was that they had the oxygen colder than most other launches would keep it. So for the new launch, they're bringing the temperature of the oxygen back up a little, which should prevent the problem in the short term. In the long term, they're hoping to change the tank, the but, helium tank. But they won't be able to do the launch at Cape Canaveral. That's correct. They're going to be doing it in California at the Vandenberg Air Force Base. Does that change things for their mission at all? I don't think that'll have as much of an effect on the mission as the actual configuration of the tank. And there were more people than just SpaceX that are obviously concerned at this yeah. point. It, Facebook Absolutely. had a satellite on that that uh, one that went wrong, and now you've got 10 satellites that are going up. Yeah, there's 10 satellites going to be part of a, a communications network um, that are that are scheduled to launch. And so we obviously hope that, and the company that owns them obviously hopes that nothing will go wrong. And yeah. I mean, companies that also have planned launches <laughs> with SpaceX down the line are going to be watching this closely because right. they want to be able to know that their, their payloads are safe. But at least in the near term, do you think it's likely to affect other launches? The success of this one could, I mean, absolutely. I think it's very important for SpaceX that this launch succeeds and that they prove that they've fixed the problem with the Falcon 9 rocket and that they can be relied on to safely deliver, as you said, multi-million dollar payloads. Yeah, I mean, Musk has talked from the beginning about wanting to get to Mars. Yeah. And, and the Falcon 9 has, has, is going to play a big part in that. Isn't that, isn't that right? That's right. So the Falcon 9 is part of a, another rocket called the Falcon Heavy, which is essentially a Falcon 9 rocket with two extra boosters that give it more power. And it's going to be an incredibly powerful rocket, uh, the second most powerful in history. And Elon Musk is really hoping that that is the vehicle that's going to take humans to Mars. And he wants to do this by 2018. Well, he does want to go to Mars by 2018, but he doesn't want to bring humans at that point. That's going to be a robotic mission. Likely to happen? Yeah. Sorry. I I'm, I'm not super optimistic. I mean, for <laughs> just the, the launch that's supposed to happen next week, originally Musk said that'll be in mid-November. Yeah. Then he said mid-December. Right. Now it's moved again. And so I think that when you're looking that far down the road at such a complicated mission, 2018 seems kind of soon. Right. A lot of stake here. Sophie Bushwick, thank you very much.